The Growing Destinations podcast is brought to you by Experience Rochester. Learn more about Minnesota's third largest city, which is home to Mayo Clinic and features wonderful recreational and entertainment opportunities by visiting experiencerochestermn.com. In this business, I think the reward is being able to have a concept, develop the concept, and see the gratification on an individual that you've never met before within Six minutes of meeting meeting this person, this person and I have now shared a a an experience that you know it's 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 very rewarding. You know they they took me on my word, they tried it the way I said it, and they're like, "Wow, this is like the greatest thing since sliced bread." And I'm like, "Yes." In any aspect of the entrepreneurial journey, you pick up things, you do things that you never imagined you could have done. And I've never been a you know a handy type of guy, but. Now that we own this truck, I'm learning handy things. And that's been wonderful. It's been humbling, but also very wonderful. Welcome to the Growing Destinations podcast, where we take a deep dive into destination development and focus on a wide range of topics, from tourism and entertainment to economic development and entrepreneurism and much more. I'm your host, Bill Von Bank. Food trucks are not new concepts, but they are growing in popularity and variety. Today, I'm joined by two culinary professionals who share their entrepreneurial journey in the food industry, which has evolved into food trucks. Joseph Phillips is owner and operator of Jersey Joe's, serving authentic cheesesteak sandwiches in Rochester, Minnesota. And Chandu Valuri is a partner with Pine Island, Minnesota-based Infusion Foods, delivering the fresh taste of Indian-inspired cuisine to your doorstep. They have become collaborators and good friends, and discuss with me the rewarding experience of adding food trucks to their businesses. Chandu Valuri, Joseph Phillips, welcome to the Growing Destinations podcast. Thank you. Thank you. Can you both share a little bit about yourselves in your career journey, Chandu? My career journey really essentially began in academia and still is in academia. I work as a marketing professor at Minnesota State University. And along the way, I got... Um, Charmed by food, you can say. Uh, a foodie by nature. Um, always love food, love travel, and the cultural aspects uh, that associate and surround food. And so over the years, you know, I um, evolved in my career path uh, in academia, and I would do work in consulting and had the opportunity to work with various food companies and beverage companies and things like that. But uh, in that process, I recognize that consulting is great, but uh, the entrepreneurial journey teaches you a lot more. And so from that perspective, uh, grew this passion and this wanting and this urge, you know, to have your own entrepreneurial food adventure uh, that started really in the latter part of 2016. And the name of your business is Infusion Foods. That's correct. Infusion Foods. Infusion is for Indian fusion, globally inspired foods with an Indian twist. Tell us a little bit more, because on your website, you do a really good job of explaining it and helping people to understand that you can enjoy Indian food and you shouldn't be afraid of the spices or anything related to Indian food. That also kind of dovetails nicely with my background. I was born in India, but never really lived in India. I grew up in Canada and Europe for most of my schooling. And ended up uh, meeting a a lovely lady here in Minnesota who happened to be South African. So our family is very globally oriented. And what really sparked infusion was this idea that, you know, much like Italian food and Japanese food and Chinese food and Mexican food has adapted to the American palate. We believe that uh, Indian food, too, is in that space. It's evolving uh, as part of the American, you know, cuisine And that uh, our objective is to make it more friendly, more appealing, and, you know, uh, to to decrease that that, that scariness or, you know, the little issue surrounding the lack of wanting to try it. Joseph, you are originally from New Jersey, is that correct? That is. Can you tell us about your life and your career? A Jersey kid, born and raised. uh, We played football and did all the things of inner city kid, you know, Uh, got my big break here of getting accepted to Tuskegee University. I went down there and studied uh, engineering. You know, at first I wanted to be an aerospace engineer, uh, but quickly learned that um, that's a very defined field and I could probably work out better if I broadened my horizon. So I uh, landed a degree in electrical engineering, 
uh, which eventually landed me here in Minnesota with IBM. In Rochester, Minnesota. That is Rochester, Minnesota, yes. And ironically funny, that's uh, when they gave me my job offer, they said Rochester. I thought they meant Rochester, New York. You know, I was <laughs> down in Georgia at the time, and I was excited to get back to the East, and I was a little sidetracked. Uh, like, <laughs> where's him in, you know? Uh, so when I figured it out and uh, looked at the demographics and everything to do with Rochester, we decided to come down here and uh, try it out, and, you know, we've been here ever since. Had a good, about eight good years with uh, IBM. Started with the supporting the AS400 and then moved to the chip design area. Um, and then as time went on, uh, what have you, IBM got out of their hardware business, which uh, landed me an opportunity. You know, I, I, I left IBM and uh, started working for a local company, Recava, as a, a project manager. Enjoyed it, but there is uh, something about getting laid off that puts a taste in your mouth. You know, and that taste is how do I secure uh, more of my future? And uh, that was a question that I started asking myself. And at the time, my wife had, her career started taking off at uh, Mayo Clinic. Uh, so that kind of kind of kept me here locally. And uh, I made a decision to open Jersey Joe's because for us, it was, we, we just didn't have anything familiar. We didn't have a place that really had cheesesteaks or deli subs or things that I grew up with. And um, as far as my wife's aspect, she uh, grew up down South and her palate was more Southern, you know, uh, flavorful and, and things of that nature. So we kind of combined it too. And we opened up Jersey Joe's to give a, uh, a taste of the East with a mix of, uh, you know, Southern cuisine or, or a style of cooking. Um, and that's how Jersey Joe's came about. Uh, the name, very simple. Uh, my name is Joe and I'm from Jersey, so I didn't really put a whole lot into that, <laughs> you know. Uh, it works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I hear. Uh, a lot of people think that I'm associated with uh, with Jersey Mike's, which is a very interesting thing, you know. And uh, I tell them, well, that's my cousin, you know. I just, uh, <laughs> uh, But there's no financial uh, agreement there. And, uh, you know, it actually opens up a lot of uh, room there because a lot of people come. And they and they look for franchises, you know. So they they see Jersey Mike's and they make the the mix up, and then that gives me a, a chance to introduce them something new, right? Me myself, I like competition, so I enjoy Jersey Mike's opened up when they opened up on Circle Drive because I think it it it, it makes you rise to the, to the challenge, you know, whether I'm going to deliver or not, you know. And so far, uh, we've been delivering and very very strongly. When did you open Jersey Joe's? We opened in 2015. So we're celebrating seven, almost seven and a half years. Yeah. That's great. Chandu, when did you start Infusion Foods? Yeah, we formally incorporated in late 2016, um, around November 2016. But then by the time we procured our facility and whatnot, it was um, June of 2017. So you can see operations really began in June of 2017. So where Joseph has a brick and mortar store, your business model is delivery? That's correct. Yeah, we are meal delivery oriented. That's one of the major streams uh, of our business. So we have a commercial facility in Pine Island um, where we are able to curate meals and deliver. Presently, we're delivering in about 23 communities in southeastern Minnesota. Both of your organizations have some success behind you and uh, uh, some years behind you to to kind of get it right, if you will. But you've also both jumped into the world of food trucks. And so I really want to focus on that because such a growing trend. Pre-pandemic, the growth of food trucks was about 7.5% annually. Took a little dip during the, the COVID pandemic, starting to rise again. So let's talk about why you jumped into the food truck world. Joseph? Well, the food truck world was a bit of a, uh, a thought for us at first. You know, we opened up initially 2015 we purchased our, well, let me step back. Before I say we purchased, we actually got into Steel County Fair the summer of 2016. And at the time, there was Max Cafe uh, that was here. And George, uh, I, I was getting very acquainted with. He was really my mentor in the, in the food industry, and uh, he had been doing it for decades. He basically allowed me to borrow all his equipment, you know, <laughs> and set up. And uh, and that was quite the experience. We got out there and we did very, very well. So you got a taste for it. Yeah, yeah, you know. But then we realized that uh, having a food truck was probably the smarter move when uh, nature wanted to rain on you, you know. And <laughs> that's kind of what, what kind of got us there. And we, we 
purchased a food truck and we just kept going from there, you know, growing our presence there. Chandu, how about you? What would happen is that you know, we'd see Joe at, you know, things like Rochester Fest and other events in the area. And we'd always strike a conversation and he's a great guy to hang out with and he makes great food. So we'd always trade food and enjoy each other's company. And he said, you guys really should be thinking about this food truck. And, you know, I passed it off a year or two. And then <laughs> I realized what he was saying. And uh, here we are. And we actually keep running into each other. And, uh, you know, we we're become good friends. And he gives us a lot of pointers on what to do. So very collegial. Very much so. Do you see growth in your retail businesses from operating a food truck? I do. Yeah. I, I believe so. But what's happened is you get noticed a lot. And so we've noticed an um, you know, uptick in our digital and our online presence just because of the food truck. And the food truck has allowed us, and I'm sure it will continue to allow us, to have a lot more reach. You're able to meet people all over at different festivals, at different pop-ups, at different mu- music series, whatnot. And it just gets your word out. And I think that uh, we're starting to see a, a definite improvement in that piece. How about you, Joseph? Any growth in your business? Yeah, most definitely. Uh, Being able to get out to some of the smaller communities is a a good marketing tool for us. Um, Where people would have heard of us but not have tried the food, we get out to uh, some of these smaller towns and uh, they fall in love. And uh, and then they come search you out. And it was amazing. I remember the first year that we did it and we uh, went to Steel County. And people would come down on a weekly basis. And I'm like, that's pretty far away, you know. <laughs> but they didn't have anything like that going on in their town. So they came down, you know. Um, and, I, and I think that it's, uh, it's a huge marketing uh, aspect that when you go out there and you have this, this food truck, it's this, you know, 16-foot, in my case, 30-foot banner that moves around, you know. And, and people take notice very well, you know. Yeah, I was just going to add to that. You know, I remember uh, the first week that we're driving the truck around and, you know, st- you know very much in the right lane, <laughs> driving 40 miles an hour, <laughs> looking in every direction possible. And then about 30 minutes later, someone calls their cell and says, I saw you guys driving down the highway. Uh, are you able to do this event? Da, 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 da. And as Joe points out, that's a phenomenal marketing advantage. Do you find there's more events than you can do that are just reaching out to you, asking you to participate in this event or that event? Most definitely. And, and and that's a good problem to have. You know, uh, that means that people are talking about you. People are thinking about you. Uh, it is it is a, a down point that you can't do everything that's asked. Uh, but you try to grow a little bit every season. You know, if I did four events last year, I'm trying to do five the next year, you know. Um, and, and then if you do, you know, for a while that I've been doing it, then you realize it's really not the huge numbers. It is the quality of what you do. If, when you go there. Everyone enjoys himself and everyone is satisfied that 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 in itself is going to launch you in places that you didn't dream of being, you know, uh, so trying to do everything is not necessarily a good thing, you know, but do what you do very well. You know? Can you do this year round with your food trucks or is it more of a seasonal thing? Well, in Minnesota, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the food trucks are very durable. Um, they they uh, it, you design it the way you want. Uh, but uh, Minnesota has a uniqueness about them because of the weather and how cold it gets uh, that it does not become feasible um, at some point because you need running water and you need some other aspects that get affected by the cold. You've both identified food trucks as growth opportunities for your businesses. What are the challenges you currently face with operating food trucks? Uh, You have to be very strategic because you have a limited amount of resources to utilize. Um, And in my case, I have a brick and mortar and and a food truck. So you have to consider some things there. I think uh, resources and weather being the biggest challenges. Yeah, and for us, it's it's learning the process. <laughs> I'm still trying to perfect how to back the, the trailer. <laughs> and I'm getting a lot more comfortable driving forward, you know. But uh, learning the mechanisms, you know, um, the regulatory piece of it, um, there's a lot more, you know, licenses and, and things like that you need to be uh, abreast of as you venture into different areas and zones and territories and things of that sort. Weather is a huge piece, as Joe pointed out, you know, one great day of weather can do wonders for you. One really bad day of weather can, you know, be a downer. And of course, you know, managing what you can handle. You have to be strategic. There's so many supply chain issues right now. So you got to make sure that you have ample resources in terms of, you know, the ingredients for food. 
you know, you have backup plans in case you run out of food, all that kind of stuff. So there's a lot, but uh, it's educational. You learn, and with time, I'm sure you become a lot more, you know, predictive uh, in th- in terms of being able to handle things. I've noticed food trucks at more corners of streets. I've noticed food trucks even in major retailer parking lots. Do you think the food trucks will continue to grow in popularity for years to come? Food trucks are not new. They've been around since I've been a kid. But the idea of the the quantity and the diversity of them, I think, are growing. I think we were all frequent with uh, maybe a Mexican-style food truck or you know a, a lunch-style short-order uh, food truck. But now you have all types of food trucks like Infusion. And I've seen a variety of different ones that you know make me say, hmm, that's pretty interesting, you know. Uh, so yes, I, I really think it's growing and, and I, and I really hope that it keeps growing. You know? I second that. <laughs> Are there networking and learning opportunities within the food truck community? You earlier, you talked about collaboration you both have as food truck operators, but are there global associations for food truck operators or just even within the community that you operate or, or the state of Minnesota? I believe so. I mean, I, I rely heavily on the social media piece of it. And there's various, you know, online groups, social media groups tied to, you know, food trucks and things like that, where you learn a lot, you know, where, you know, you actually seek out business because people are, you know, are advertising or looking for food trucks to come to their venues and things like that. But, you know, the best source has been county fairs and just various local events where you meet great guys like, you know, Joe here, who you strike a conversation with and, you know, he tells you to get a cordless drill and you do it and it makes a lot more difference. I think that, you know, the peer group element of it goes a long way in terms of, you know, learning the ropes. Joseph, it sounds like maybe you have to write a manual. Well, uh, <laughs> that's his next step. <laughs> and, 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 no, and, and I want to, I want to uh, thank Shandu uh, because he actually listened. Um, you know, a lot of times in, in, in growth, we, we have an idea and, you know, we become very blinded and we don't listen to people around us. But I got to say from the onslaught of, of infusion when I met him in a in a tent to where he is now, he's he's when I said something, he would look at me and say, hmm, OK, you know, uh, and, and now that he has the food truck, you know, I, I try to drop what I learned on him and, and, and laugh at his struggle because I remember being there, you know, and uh, he's quickly learning to perfect his craft. And, and I applaud you for that. What's most rewarding about operating a food truck? I, I think what's most rewarding is in, in this business, I think the reward is being able to have a concept, develop the concept, and see the gratification on, on an individual that you've never met before. Within six minutes of meet, meeting this person, this person and I have now shared a, a an experience that, you know, it's it's – it's very rewarding. You know, they, they took me on my word. They tried it the way I said it. And they're like, wow, this is like the greatest thing since sliced bread. And I'm like, yes, you know? So, uh, so I, I think the satisfaction of being able to, to, uh, to give someone a short satisfaction in, in a very short amount of time is, is, is I think very rewarding for me. Chandu. I think what's rewarding is you are, in any aspect of the entrepreneurial journey, you pick up things, you do things that you never imagined you could have done. And I've never been a, you know, a handy type of guy, but now that we own this truck, I'm learning handy things. And that's been wonderful. It's been humbling, but also very wonderful. The other piece of it, I think, is you need to be prepared to do things on that truck. You need to be able to, you know, man that truck. And so the both of us are sitting here, but, you know, we're on that truck. We're operating that truck. We're learning how to do that day in and day out. And that is very gratifying. And when you see a little kid or a customer come by and have a wonderful experience and come back again, that is the most gratifying. At the end of the day, you do that. You do what you do because you believe in what you do and you bring a smile, hopefully, to someone's uh, face. Shandu Valuri and Joseph Phillips. Best of luck to you on your business ventures, and thanks for being our guest on the Growing Destinations podcast. Thank Thank you. you. Thank you for tuning in to the Growing Destinations podcast, and don't forget to subscribe. This podcast is brought to you by Experience Rochester. Find out more about Rochester, Minnesota, and its growing arts and culture scene, its international culinary flavors, and award-winning craft beer by visiting experiencerochestermn.com.